Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really fun and exciting DIY Halloween decor video. These are some of my absolute favorite videos to do every single year. I get so hyped for these. So I'm really excited to share with you guys what I came up with this year. If this is your first time on my channel, what's up and welcome. My name is Kate and I would love for you guys to click subscribe. That's all I wanted to say here in the beginning. So if you guys want to see what fun Halloween home decor I came up with this year, then just keep watching. All right, you guys. So I'm starting out with the easiest one first. All you're going to need is a piece of black paper whether it's cardstock regular construction paper either will work you're gonna need a reference photo of a bat and a pencil and some scissors so what I'm doing right now is just drawing out the shape of a bat with a pencil and I didn't actually go with any of the ones that you just saw I kind of combined a few different ones into making my own so I just drew up a little shape of a bat and I made it in a size that would fit inside of my lamp that is key you don't want to make it too big having it a little bit too small is okay but you just definitely don't want it too big so the first one you're just going to go ahead and cut that out and then once we have this cut out we're going to use this as a stencil All right, now assuming you like the way this looks, we are going to place this back onto the paper and then trace around it a few more times. You can choose however many bats you want to put in your lampshade. In one of mine, I did four. In one of mine, I did three. I kind of like the way three looks better. It just looks a little less crowded, but again, that's gonna be totally personal preference. So don't worry about tracing them out too perfectly. You can cut around any of the lines and then also don't worry about getting them cut out perfect since they're gonna be inside your lamp. You're not even gonna see any pencil marks that might be left on the paper. So then just grab some tape, make a little loop out of it, and go ahead and stick that inside your lampshade. Sticking it inside the lampshade like this is going to cast a shadow when you turn the lampshade on and it gives off the coolest vibe at night. I absolutely loved the way this turned out. You can place them inside your lamp however your heart desires and you know if you want to make some smaller, some bigger, it's totally up to you. Just get creative and have fun with it. This is definitely one that I feel like anybody could do. So here we have the bats inside the lampshade. So the next DIY are these creepy little mason jar lanterns. I actually got this idea on Pinterest. This has been sitting on my Pinterest board for the last two years and I've been wanting to make them and I just haven't. So here we are making them today. No, I did not come up with this idea, but I thought it was definitely worth sharing. So here's a few of the supplies you're gonna need. This freaky fabric. I've seen it called creepy cloth. I actually have that as my table runner on my table right now. It's really cool and it's pretty inexpensive. Um, scissors, hot glue, twine, candle. It's all pretty simple. So then you're going to just take this fabric and unfold it so that you're down to a single layer. And then we're going to measure the fabric around the mason jar. You can use whatever sized mason jar you want to. I also chose to use the green one because I felt like that would kind of give it a little bit more of a creepy vibe. And then just measure about another mason jar's length underneath, maybe a little bit less, but just underneath that jar so that it's able to hang off the bottom and give that really creepy, just kind of like old vibe. I know this is really silly, but for some reason it reminded me of that Scooby-Doo movie, like the Haunted Island one. I don't know. I just feel like this would be a stage prop for that movie. So anyway, just measure around your glass and make sure that you've got enough to overlap slightly onto the first layer. So you want it to be able to like hang off and not like have any weird gaps. So I did cut it a little extra long. That way it covered up the entire jar. Um, you could make several of these out of this little freaky fabric, creepy cloth, whatever. So much comes in a little container that you could make tons and tons of these if you wanted to. So first I'm starting out with a little hot glue dollop onto my mason jar and then very carefully I'm pressing that fabric down um, with my finger. Be careful, obviously the glue is very hot and will get to you since this fabric is not solid. I did this in about four places around the rim of the mason jar. All right, once you get right back around, make a little glue dot in the same spot that you started. Make sure your fabric is wrapping all the way around and you cut it correctly. And then with whatever is left over the little hanging extra fabric, um, just glue that down at the very edge as well. 
All right, at this point, if you like how the fabric looks, you can totally just leave it. I wanted to make mine a little bit jagged and like extra creepy looking. So I went ahead and cut into the bottom and tried to make kind of like triangular cuts. I feel like those look the best and don't leave you with like weird chunky hanging pieces of fabric. So I cut everything on an angle. Just a little FYI, this fabric does shed quite a bit, so if you do decide to make these, don't be alarmed if your fabric starts shedding off the end. It's not gonna like all unravel and come apart. So next we are going to create the twine little hanging mechanism, if you will. Um, this, I okay, so full disclosure, when I said this was not on my Pinterest board, I mean the picture. I'm one of those people who never actually reads the post. I just like look at the picture and try to make it myself. So that's exactly what I did. I just hot glued some twine around the rim of this, not actually where it closes. Obviously you want it to be just below um, that so you can close the top to your mason jar. And then once that's on, I thread some twine in between that and you know, tied a knot. Right here I'm making the little hanging part so you can make this however short or long you want to depending on where you're wanting to actually hang this. So when you're doing the twine around, make sure it's loose enough that you could still slide a little piece of twine down in there to tie a knot. You can adjust it to whatever length you want right here and then go ahead and tie a double knot to make your little hanger. Once you've got your knots nice and secure, you can cut the excess off. I did actually add a little bit of hot glue on top of the knots just to make sure they stayed. So I didn't show that part, but I did do that just so you know. Uh, then you can pop out your candle, turn it on, dunk it down in there and close the top and you have yourself a creepy little Halloween lantern. I actually like this so much that I'm planning on making a couple more and hanging these like kind of going up my staircase. I just thought they were so cute and so fun. So definitely a fun and worth it DIY to make. So the next one, we are going to take some really fake looking succulents and spray paint them black. I got this one at the Target Dollar Spot for three bucks. And this one I ordered on Amazon thinking it looked really real, but it actually didn't. So now we're repurposing it. I am going to be spraying this with some shiny black spray paint. I'm the worst spray painter ever, so probably don't don't do what I did. I was way too close. Um, I got some little drippies. I think you probably want to go in with a lighter hand on the first coat too, but like I'm really impatient, so that's hard for me. <laughs> so I ended up with some drips and some bubbles, but it's okay because we added some gold paint on it later and that kind of covered it anyway. Now, if you like them black, you could just leave it, but I love black and gold Halloween decor, so I'm taking this liquid gilding. You can get this at just about any craft store. Shake it up and add yourself some metallic gold accents. This stuff is like really, really beautiful. I've used this on a few different projects and it is just super gold. It looks awesome. It actually looks like basically you dipped it in like liquid gold or something. So um, very carefully, just kind of on the edges, I'm going around like in a little V shape kinda and just putting on some gold. And I wasn't really being too precise or careful with this because let's be real, it's Halloween decor and I feel like kind of the more gaudy and messy, the better anyway, right? So that's what I'm doing here. And then I decided to add a little bit to the pot that it was in. So I didn't know exactly what I was going for, but I quickly realized that my brush was kind of frayed and gave this really cool effect. So I just kind of brought it down the side of the pot in a really like creepy little pattern. And I love the way that this one turned out. For this one, I went for a similar vibe and I just kind of brought it around the edge of the pot on this one as well. And then I also just kind of barely tapped the little tip of the pet, or what would you call this, a petal? I don't know, on a succulent, maybe a leaf? I don't know. Um, anyway, just the little tip of that, I wanted to make gold and just kind of make it look 
dipped in gold you know what i mean so that is actually it for this year's diy halloween home decor i hope you enjoyed it i also wanted to remind you guys that my limited edition halloween merch is still for sale up on my website so if you'd like to check that out i will have that link down below join the spooky squad get you some gear um you guys are already starting to get it and i'm seeing some pictures and i'm loving it and i'm actually wearing my hoodie right now it is super comfortable so definitely check that out thanks again so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys tomorrow. Free, free, free.